Yeah. All right, we're gonna go through that real quick. Okay. And I'm gonna I'm gonna draw this out so that we we know what we're talking about. I'm gonna just draw a quick little map of that. I'm not a very good artist, so you got to bear with me a little bit. Oh, yeah. Sure. Right. So this area here is Oran. Uh-huh. Right? Uh-huh. And up here on the high point is St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Now, there's four different forces that come in at St. Louis. Right. It was the first armor division, but the 6th Infantry, the, uh, so the first army comes in at St. Louis, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And you all sweep southward to a town called, can you spell that? T-A-L-A, down here, can you spell the name of that town? about 10 miles away from where you're going. Yeah. Right? At the same time. And then you come up, then you all move forward to the next town, which is called Valmay. Mm -hmm. B-A-L-M-A-Y. Right? You see that right there? Yeah. Val May. Yes. See the name? Oh, yeah, Val May. Alright, so you said you walked two miles. To Oran. To Oran. Yeah. Now, where were you policing at? Were you policing south of Val May or north of Val May? I was uh, policing uh, south. South? Yeah. So the bivouac area, was that north or south? South. Right. So you bivouac in here, uh -huh. but you make a two-mile walk from there to all around. Oh, you, yeah. The day that you got hit in the, with that swagger stick from the British officer, that happened here? That happened south while you were policing, right? Right, yeah, because we was uh, leaving that place pretty soon. All because you picked up a piece of scrap paper, tore it up, and threw it back on the yeah. ground. Man, he came after me like a bull. Really? Yeah. All right, so why did you have to make the walk from here to Oran? I, well, I, I, I asked permission to, that uh, if I could go down to Oran. I said, yeah, well, I went to Oran, I had $125, and I went to Oran, and I, I got, I started renting. Yeah. And uh, I, was, I was pretty well shot by myself, you know. So these two kids were standing on the side there with a, uh, with a, looked like a garage to me, door. Yeah. Which you, uh, they use that, where, where they have people in there, living in there. They drop that big door down and lock themselves in it. As you walk by? Uh, yeah. It's, it's maybe I could be shooting around. They just drop those there and I, I look like a, made out of uh, some type of uh, a hard stuff, like, in fact, you could say that they had a little bit of more iron than it did anything else loose. So they could withstand the bullets, I guess. That's what it, I thought it would be. Yeah. And I, and I sat down. Palibu, uh, English? No, 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 no. Mama, mama and called the mother, and one was, uh, the boy might have been, 
I would say maybe nine years old, and the girl was, might have been maybe maybe the boy eight, and the girl about eight, nine, or nine years old. Yeah, eight, eight and nine. Uh, yeah. So I ask, I ask, uh, where the uh, power off? Abu, Abu got uh, coffee, co cafe, coffee, coffee. You know, I wanted to get this. Light headed off. Yeah. We didn't know we were going to be leaving there. Because you've been drinking a little yeah. bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, on your way back to the bivouac. Yeah. So he said, uh, uh, I, asked, I, asked, I asked her because I said, this, she, ain't, she ain't a, uh, she's not a camel driver. She must be some something. She must be Spain, Spanish. So I said, uh, Hablate español. Un poco. Well, that's good. Look, I want some coffee. Ah, no tengo café yo. In other words, she told me she didn't have no coffee. Right. So I said, no. So I put my hand in my pocket. I said, here. I gave her a over about a hundred and twenty dollar. I said, get some coffee. I need some coffee and get me something to drink. Yeah. Said, what do you want to drink? Uh, well, how about uh, what the hell is that damn ass drink? Uh, that uh, I asked for, and she brought it. She brought that champagne. Champagne? Yeah. Well, that'll help a hangover. Yeah, that'll help a good hangover. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, Muy bien, muy bien, todo bien. So he talked to the kids and told them, he said, You stay here <clears throat> and don't, don't, don't agitate him. He's been drinking quite a bit, so you don't entertain him at all. Yeah. So, okay, okay, man. Yeah, yeah. So, I thought then, uh, when the, she came back, she said, uh, I brought you some coffee. Uh, well, I want to make some coffee. Yeah, yeah, make some coffee for you. Did the kids drink coffee? No. But what did they drink? It, uh, milk, but uh, uh, I have no money for milk. Well, you got $120. You got money have. now. I yeah. said, uh, 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 300 and, and, uh, francs for one dollar. I said, you still got quite a bit of money. Right. So she went and got that stuff. And then they said, well, okay, let me go ahead and get, get something for them, the kids to eat. And, you too, you eat it. What? Don't, don't, don't bother about the money I got. Anyway, I ain't got no use for money. Not out here. Okay, on to the next map of this wonderful book. Sorry, sir. Yeah. Well, this is an old it book. It shows Algiers. Yeah. Okay. We went through there. Let me, let me, let me see if I can... Constantine. Constantine. Algeria. Let's see if I can find those two gourds. This guy. We kind of skipped some map here. Mm -hmm. How about Tabessa? You remember that? No. Uh, we might have been there. How about Tabarca? No. Philipville? No, I, we, 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 we didn't deal with. They, the only ones that did with that map is the officers. Okay. Well, that shows this British movement anyway. Okay. For the most part. Oh right? yeah, we we find them on the road drinking tea. On the, <laughs> find them on the road drinking tea. Yeah. All we right. Pass them by. Well, at full speed ahead. Let's let's go back to this. All right. Basically, you all move down around here. You start getting into where the Kazarine Pass is. Okay. The Kazarine Pass is right here. Mm -hmm. So I know you all do come this way. Yeah. All right here, you can hold this. So what I want to ask you, I'm going to, I'm going to try to draw the path up a little bit. Mm -hmm. It'll give you some sense of the path. 
and I want you to try to explain to me your operational requirements while you're there. All right? Yeah. Kazarine is not a very not, not, difficult not, thing, but no, but uh, this where the we encounter the darn uh, Germans. No, uh, the, the the Italians. The, they had the Italians in the front, and the Germans behind them in case they run back and they shoot them. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought you all had convinced the Italians to jump on board, but that hadn't happened yet, huh? No, no, no. Okay. This is the beginning of the war. All right. So the Kazarin Pass, I'm going to touch on a story. You told me once that you were driving the half track for your commander. Yeah. And that you all had gotten so far ahead, you were ahead of all your military guys. Yeah. All right. Now there comes a point where you realize you're so far ahead, your, your commander pulls you back. Right? Uh -huh. We lose a lot of tanks at the Kazarian Pass because Rommel is moving forward. Right. All right? Uh-huh. Now you told me one time though you were sitting up here on a high peak or a or a, yeah. or, or a berm yeah. or something of that right. sense, and you right. could look down into the pass. Yeah, no, I'm on the corner. Down the 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 the, 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 the hill is like this here. The hill is like this here. Okay. Okay. So it stops from seeing straight ahead. So here here we are on the bottom of it, the bottom of it, and on the corner, like this here. We could see this way here, but we couldn't see nothing here. So you're like here, and you can see this way, or you can see yeah, that you, way? Yeah, you can, I can see the, 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 the path. Okay, so the so rival's coming in this way, yeah. and you can see this way, Yeah. into the pass. Into the pass, from uh, there, from where you go through that line in between, yeah. You can see that, actually. You can see that. But you couldn't see back the other way? No. Okay. Couldn't see nothing. While you're in the, while you're looking in the past, when you're working in the past, uh, one of the things that you said you were doing was uh, vehicle recovery. No, no, that that didn't happen there yet. Okay, where no. did where did that start at? That started in St. Louis. In St. Louis? Yeah, we lost 17 tanks. 17 tanks. Okay. Yeah. All right, that works. So the the. We lost that many tanks, so we, they sent us to go ahead and was they sent us when we got up there. I was in the machine gun company. Okay. Okay. I was a machine gun. So when we got to uh, North Africa in St. Louis, everything changed. See. So from a a submachine, so from a machine gun company to a maintenance company. Right. Okay. So, as a maintenance company, it was our job, with, we had the heavy retriever to pull them back with the tanks, light tanks. We lost, uh, what the heck? Daddy Rabbit was Colonel. Oh my gosh, what was his name? In fact, they got a building there in Fort Knox named after him. Uh, Daddy Rabbit lost, lost 17 tanks there. And he was, uh, he was sitting around the fire. I mean, he was, that fire getting warmed up. And he said, uh, would you like to come to my unit? I said, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with you. He said, you know, you know, I don't need anything about tanks. I said, yeah, I, I, I can drive a tank. Well, let me talk to your company commander, and then he, he says, you okay, all right. I said, well, sure, you can talk to him if you don't want to go. If he says, well, it's up to me, he said, well, I'll go now. So he said, well, I, I know I can't do take you right away, no. 
I have to talk to him and see if he wants, if he let you go. If he'll approve it. Yeah, if he'll approve that. Well, at the meantime, somehow he got in another tank and he says, I'll see you, okay? I said, oh, all right. Take care now. Be careful down there. You know, there's that bunch of crouch. He said, yeah, I'll take care of myself. <laughs> I'll take care of that. He said, okay. I'll be damned if he didn't get killed. Really? Yeah. He was a, he was a West Pointer at that. Did you find that the West Point guys were a little bit uh, over the top in, in terms of their man, management style? Uh, <clears throat> to tell you the, the truth, this is the truth. There were some of them that were hot-headed. I mean, that uh, they would uh, run the whole world without anybody interferences. You know, wouldn't they tolerate their way. It. They wouldn't tolerate nothing. And then you have found out that they weren't all the same. You know, some of them, I had, uh, had commanders that were in the company commanders that were West Pointer, just like, uh, that uh, nephew of Mark Clark, he was my company commander, he was a captain. Yeah. But he was a very simple man. I mean... Was he a West Pointer? He was, I, 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 I think he was a West Pointer. Okay. Yeah. So, then I uh, was a, a, a serve under uh, Captain... Uh, what the heck it was his name? He came to the restaurant, he knew the restaurant. And, uh, uh, I served under him, and when Captain, I mean General Story, had his had his celebration here in, in at Fort Knox, I was out of the army. Yeah. So the this, this uh, colonel, he was a colonel then. He waited with all the wives who served with him. He waited. Until I, I got there, the wife drove me down there, have, have looted, and, <laughs> and uh, I, I got out of the down, uh, car and everybody started clapping and hollering and screaming, you know. I was, when like, you got out? Yeah, yeah, when I got out of the car, and here's General Story <laughs> Look, He's like, how come this guy gets a bigger yeah. fanfare? Yeah, huh? a fanfare, so I got to get over there. And uh, I said, uh, how you doing, General? I saluted him and all of that. Oh, I said, I'm doing so okay. I said, you gained a little weight. And his wife was dressed in a mumu dress. Yeah. Never forget that. And she said, I have you know that he's retired. <laughs> so he can eat as much as he wants to and as long as he can. <laughs> so I said, well, I was used to see him Standing like a, a two by four straight. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Well, now he's not because he's retired. I told you that. No. I said, I understand you, ma'am. I, 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 I said, I eye on that. <laughs> I said, Well, I, I don't think I can get that big when I get retired. Well, you got a long ways to go. Not that long. I said, Yeah, I'm already retired. <laughs> <laughs> I says, and I haven't gained a pound yet. Right. But I don't doubt it. If I won't, I will gain it. But I'm going to try to make sure they don't get it. You see never, it. you never gained it. No, <laughs> I never gained nothing. So, all right, let's let's move on. Okay. All right. So after you all come through the Kazarine Pass, the next objective for the uh, Allied forces, the British are pushing up from the south along the coastal border. Yeah. They had fought down here in Ale, Alamein, and they they broken through a couple of German lines. Right. So what Eisenhower had in mind was a kind of a piston effect. Bring a wall to the west side, and the British pushing up, and it would force the Germans up and out through Tunis. Okay? Right. Uh -huh. Now you all actually make it to Tunis. Right. right? Yes. When you all come in, you're on the northern sector. And you actually make it to Tunis. And I also see markings in those maps that put you all right about here. So my question is, when you leave North Africa to make your sweep around Sicily, right, 
No, okay, you go ahead and throw that, whatever you And then, then we go to the boot. Now there's very little balance between these two spots. Your next yeah. stop is going to be Naples. Naples. Right? Okay. Now, the first time I never, never, I never landed all, oh, we landed there in, in, um, in Sicily. We had nothing to do with Sicily. You skipped it, right? That was, that was a uh, second, second armor. Second armor division to take over Sicily. Right. Which they did it. Did you all launch from Tunis? We, we, first armor? Tunis, Tunis, you're talking about North Africa? Yeah, I mean, you didn't go all the way back to Oran and board up and leave out of there, oh, did you? Oh, yeah, we did. We went to Oran and uh, lived off of Oran. So you left from Tunis after catching Tunis, yeah. drove back to Oran. Yeah. After after the Casablanca, we was on the outskirts of Casablanca, and the mayors returned back to uh, where we started from, St. Louis. Then so there, you, yeah. St. Louis. You launched from St. Louis. Yeah. St. Louis. And there, we stood four days, and those four days is when I went to Oran and, and gave, gave my, all my money to that woman to go get me something to eat and something to drink. All right. <laughs> so when did you come across the girl in the, in the veil? I did, yeah, oh, that was when we, uh, we landed in St. Lou. Uh, St. Lou, we landed there, and then that girl just, Came over there with a walking down there. Yeah, I know the story, but yeah. that's what happened right after you landed and took control of St. Yeah, Louis. You're right. Okay. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna pause right there, Sam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the city, the small town, old. She was he was flattened. Yeah. It's a uh, he uh, when. Uh, uh, this fellow. Six German battalions, oh, some sorry. reduced to a hundred men, oh. counterattacked to plug the hole and recapture Abate. Sorry about that. <laughs> that's, that that's the British, they like to talk. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe we were about 25 miles out of, uh, out of Caivano. On the way up to the to casino, the, the casino, on the casino, on casino. Yeah. Then when we went, we we stopped, and of course the the the, the tank kept moving. And since I was a headquarters driver with that uh, thing there, with a half track, was that uh, we were at headquarters for the company. So, so uh, you're like real close to Mark Clark. <laughs> yeah. So I said, uh, uh, I, I was. I, they said, okay, we gotta send half of you to get the louse. You know what what that, that is. Right. Get some junk on you so they can put all them fleas and everything else. Fleas and flies yeah, and yeah. ticks and bugs. Yeah. And bug off of us. He said, as soon as you get, get ready, you'll be going back to your, to your units. Right back, I went back. I, I, I uh, me, I, I, myself, and this Polak, he said, uh, hey, I said, yeah. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't tell me the story again. I know this story. You're uh, about to get drunk. Yeah, I know this story. Yeah. But yeah. we're going to bring up some important questions that are relevant around that. Okay. I want you to listen to this for a minute, okay? Uh -huh. And it starts with, now it was up to the Americans. It's going to take about two paragraphs to get there. You see this a thing. French division log recorded, see this Hill 700 letters. has been taken by us four times. Hill 771 has been taken by us three times. Hill 915 has been taken by us and unsuccessfully counterattacked four times by That's the enemy. Casino. Yeah. Parched colonials died while dashing to exposed mountain streams for a final sip of water. A note found on a dead French officer read, Haven't eaten or drunk since we set out. Others survived by eating captured rations and firing captured munitions. 
the human mechanism has its limits. A French captain wrote in his diary, shortly before a machine gun bullet killed him. Juan reluctantly agreed. To Clark he wrote that his corps had dented the Gustav line at the cost of unbelievable efforts and great losses. One Algerian regiment alone had lost 1,400 men, including the commander. German losses amounted to a battalion each day, but Kesselring still held the high ground. To Juan's regret, the FEC could do no more. Now the thankless task fell to the Americans, specifically the 34th Infantry Division. Originally composed of Iowa and Minnesota National Guardsmen, the 34th in Tunisia had been much traduced before winning redemption at Hill 609 in the final days of the campaign. The division's newcomers included the 100th Infantry Battalion, 1,400 Japanese-American soldiers from Hawaii, Major General Charles W. Ryder, a fellow Kansan and West Point classmate of Eisenhower's, still led the division, as he had since Torch. A tall man with big ears, full lips, and a sloping nose, Doc Ryder demonstrated a valor in the Great War. Two distinguished service crosses, a silver star, and a purple heart, that in this conflict was matched by his tactical acumen and level disposition. As the French battered the Gustav line on Ryder's right, the 34th attacked north of Casino, where the Rapido ran shallow enough to ford. For three days in late January, the riflemen struggled through plunging fire, minefields, and muddy sloughs. Mm -hmm. By mid-morning on January 27th, infantry troops and four Sherman tanks held two small bridgeheads across the river while engineers corduroyed a road for armor reinforcements. Too late. By 1 p.m., all four Shermans were in flames. A jittery rifle company slid back down a hill it had just seized, and soon hundreds of soldiers were leaking to the rear in panic. Instead of five companies across the Rapido, Ryder had none. The attack resumed farther north on January 29th, only to stall while tank crews fired a thousand shells point-blank in an attempt to carve a ramp in the Rapido steep far bank. A causeway, hastily built with rocks, proved more useful. Some Shermans sank to their hull tops in mud, but nearly two dozen others gained the west bank. At five miles per hour, the tanks crept forward in polar darkness. Anti-personnel S-mines popping under their tracks like firecrackers. Each driver followed the faint glow from the tank exhaust pipe 20 yards ahead, while a crewman in the turret repelled German borders with bursts of Tommy gun fire. Riflemen followed in trail, finding shallow defilade against German artillery in the six-inch ruts cut by the tank tracks. Wraiths in field gray stole from their burrows and steel pillboxes, known to GIs as crabs, only to be shot down or captured. Diehards were flushed with phosphorus. By Sunday evening, January 30th, as the French drive sputtered, the Yanks held several key heights in the highland village of Cairo, three miles north of the Abbey. Believe we shall have casino by tomorrow night. General Keyes, the two corps commander, told his diary on February 1st. Clark cabled Alexander. Present indications are that the Casino Heights will be captured very soon. Power off. Okay. Let me pause this. I'm going to go back a step. Show you that map again. Let you get a better look at that map. So, we recalled one of your uh, tank driving days. At Casino, you're not in a tank yet. Yes, I am. You are. Did you cross the Rapido? Were you one of those 12? It wasn't. Okay. I wasn't there to cross it. Okay. Now, those are from the 
15th from the maybe the 34th infantry tanks that were worth with them but they were in ours okay okay or any any uh, in second armor division they were there before first time we got there you know yeah trying to get a uh, well trying to get a football a football in a casino okay which uh, there's where that uh, fellow by the name of uh, Kelly machine gun Kelly got the Medal of Honor okay at the casino okay because he held his that machine gun in his hands and burned him killing yeah Kirby. yeah because he didn't have any killer he didn't have his gloves no or something yeah, like that yeah because we have a, glo a glove that we could handle that with those gloves yeah. but uh, you know some somehow we get them in a toolbox so you can't get out to go get them you know because you get shot right so then casino was uh, pounded by artillery that's how coming so much damage done to the casino yeah first they blow up the town mm -hmm. and then they're forced because the Germans took refuge there they had to blow up the actual abbey right now to, yeah. to put a time stamp of your arrival there, do you recall them blowing up the town or the abbey? Uh, no, no. I, 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 uh, they had, they, in fact, there were rangers with them. Right. Okay. But they lost a lot of them. Right. In fact, I believe they lost a whole works but one ranger. Something like that. It was bad. Yeah. It was bad. And, uh, when we got there, they pulled us up there, and all we did was face, uh, we, we can see Casino from when we, when we were, where we were uh, put on there with, with uh, this, uh, uh, what do you call them, to put the darn tanks underneath it and you couldn't see them from the air because you thought it was three at three. You camouflaged them. Camouflaged them. And, uh, most of the time there was nine days I slept uh, in the in the tank and I finally in that ninth day I said to hell with that sleeping in the tank I'm going to sleep outside that's when when the the Germans threw a darn massive air, air strike of, uh, of artillery and that was air burst we call them. Okay. From from the ground, they, they set us their uh, shells to go off. It's 15 seconds. That means 15 feet. Whap. Whang. And, and it left there. Uh, uh, when I went into the tank, I was bleeding from my right this eye here. Yeah. Which you probably lose it anyway. There. They haven't get, gotten to it to get that piece yet. Nobody can see it. But my wife saw it. I, I, I feel it every day. Anyway, he said, uh, he said, I said, ah, oh, shit, I'm going to sleep outside. That's how I got hit. And I went head first down. When I went head first into the tank, oh, shit, you're bleeding. I said, yeah, I got hit in the eye, man. So he says, well, uh, look, what, go to the, the go to the first aid there tent, and it's a, it's a thousand feet from here. So you go down there, and so you can uh, put you down for a Purple Heart. I said, let me tell you one damn thing: it'll be a cold day in hell. I'm gonna walk from here a thousand feet. The way it is, they farm that damn shit on us. Right. I can't even see the damn road that going down there. Lord and behold, the next morning, who was right there knocking my knocking in my door about maybe eight o'clock in the morning? That was uh, what's his name, General General uh, okay. What the hell did I say? That? What's his name? Walker? No, Walker was in Korea. I'm sorry, uh, Clark. Clark. Clark, General Mark Clark. 
I said, no oh, shit, the general is here. I want to see you, son. Oh well, yeah, well. He said, uh, can you tell me where the CP is? <laughs> I said, I said, God, if you ask me, I don't know what the hell the CP is. I don't even know what that CP, what kind of CP it is. Right? He said, well, that's a command post. Well, okay, well, then it's command post, but I, I'm a driver. I said, no. <laughs> I don't have nothing to have to do and, with the CP. My English ain't so good, right? That's right. <laughs> and, and furthermore, I have nothing to do with the CP. Right. He said, well, that's where you get, you get, we get our orders from. Oh, right. well, okay. I learned something as I go along, okay? Oh, sure. Thank you. So, uh, there is where we went to. <laughs> there is when the, the pullers, the, he said the, to pull back and get ready for Anzio. That was it. Okay. And uh, But to be, before that, you know, like I was telling you, I already told you that when, when I got drunk and come back and the, the Colonel Gardner asked me, he says, would you like to go to a tank unit? I said, yeah, I'll go in a minute. Yeah, sure, send me to a tank unit. I want to be in the tanks. Yeah. He said, okay, so send, send me to the unit, and they were already on the front, and they already had the tank ready for me. So, this the first thing we got to do is put that stern cover over the, the tank. I said, okay, I need help here, and we got to pick that sucker and put it on, make it look like a darn tent. Okay. okay. Now this I was able to follow pretty clearly. This is old Clark. Yeah. Right? There's the seventh. Uh, somewhere in there is the, the first or whatever. But this is you all coming in to, This is when Clark first landed. And you weren't part of the first original no. landing there. No, no. So we're not, wor we're not worried about that. In fact, you don't show up for a while. The fifth doesn't really get all that involved just yet. What I'm trying to do is find a map of casino. So if you see one, as I flip through these, let me know. The Winterline Campaign, Italy. That's Alexander. Winter Campaign, Italy. Keys and McCreary again. So you have, here's the Fifth Army. All right? Mm -hmm. I think you're all down, I think you're all down here. Nope, there you are. Under Clark. You're on the southern line of the, uh, I think that's called the Gustav line, is that it? Yeah, I think so. All right, whatever that, whatever that line is there, the winter line, you're all breaking in through the south. And you don't get through, but you make good progress, you just don't make it all the way to Anzio. No. All right, but let's, let's go on backwards. Let's, let's, stay, uh, let's stay here with uh, Casino for the moment. Yeah, find Naples. Find uh, Naples? Yeah, Naples. Uh, Naples. Okay. Y'all had already yeah. come up from Naples. Yeah. This is where we landed. Right. And we went out on, out on about maybe 10, 15 miles. And we had that little town of Cavano. Cavano. Mm -hmm. And there we, we were there. And then we got the word to move, for, to move forward. So from here we, we went down the road. And I was already assigned to a tank and I was driving a tank. Okay. All right. Know. Let's jump ahead then. Okay. Let's jump ahead. So this is the town of Casino right here where that circle is. Mm -hmm. You had Castle Hill just a little bit to the northwest and the Abbey Mountain, the hill that the Abbey sat on, yeah. due west. Now they bombed the hell out of the town. That's right. And they were forced to bomb the Abbey later. Yeah. That's where they Where yeah. would this, this is you. Where would you be during these battles? This is the Rapido River. Okay. And you don't cross Rapido, you no. say. No, I stay. Uh, we stay behind the mountain. There was a retreat mountain for the, for the priests when they, they came out and rest. You know, took their... A retreat, retreat, yeah. Yeah, to a retreat. 
So we were down below Monte Casino. That's 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 the main thing. Yeah. So you're down yeah. here. Well, right. you say below, but you're actually north of it. Right. Okay. Right. In other words, here's a mountain. We're down here. Okay. So Do you remember railroad tracks? No. 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 Because uh, we never crossed. No. I don't think we could ever cross any railroad tracks that I can remember. That's fine. So then in Monte Casino. Keep going. I'm listening. Uh, we stayed there nine days, and they was going to be ready to pull out, and I and, and and we did pull out, and then they brought me back to the Rapido River and Monte Casino, okay, because the infantry was going to come in and try to go into Casino itself, right. I mean, That's where the Rangers came in. That's what we just played. Yeah. Okay. Now, then they took me back, way back, not way back, no, about maybe a mile off of the Rapido River back. So I said, what the hell, what are we going to do here? What so you're back, you're, you're down to here now. Yeah. So I said, why? What the heck did you bring me down here for? What, what is it? Well, look, we're going to go ahead and get you a tank. Well, I already got my tank. Well, this is going to be already fixed. Fixed for what? Look, don't ask questions. Let me tell you something. Well, it usually will be you alone. Again? Me alone? Yeah, you alone. Okay. Well, okay, oh, is that what you want there? Yeah. Then, well, they get the colonel. And you remember the colonel's name? The colonel? Gardner. Yeah. Colonel Gardner? Gardner, yeah. Okay. And they ask him, says, yeah, let me, let me go ahead and talk and let me slow that, slow him down. I say, it's a problem child. <laughs> <laughs> you're, the, you're the problem child? Yeah. <laughs> he said, uh, said what, 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 what do you, know, you don't understand? I said, well, uh, well, I understand everything, but they give me the tank without the darn uh, escape, escape the uh, hatch. hatch in there, uh, dropped off, and that, uh, I, I don't understand that. Well, look, this is what you're going to do. Okay, tell me. This, that's, they're going to put this cable on this bungalow torpedo. Now, it's got a ball in the front, and all you got to do is drive it in straight, and, and it's, it's, it's about maybe a hundred feet long. I said, yeah, I can do that. You're going to drive with a Bangalore torpedo on the front of your tank? Yeah. Forward? Yeah. Forward. So you're pushing the Bangalore right. up? Right. I'm pushing it. They put the cable on it and all of that. In other words, I was being used as a guinea pig. Yeah, because, I mean... The, the, kind of like they did at Omaha Beach. Yeah. This is, well, okay. I got the scoop. He went, we tell you to stop. You stop. And drop that, pull this lever, and that drop the turn to big torpedo there. And then the machine gun back in back of you over there in the corner there. He said, we'll be firing at it until it explodes. You mean they, they, they can't shoot straight? <laughs> oh, they can shoot straight, all right. But it's going to take a few rounds to hit it. So what was it that they wanted to blow up with the Bangalore? Well, was it a wall? Okay, no. They wanted to open a, 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 um, a trail there wide enough, like uh, from here to the shed. Okay. Or maybe maybe closer, about, 20, about, about 15 feet, something like that. So for 20 to 40 yards. Yeah, for, for, for the infantry to go through. Okay. Because it, 
there was places where they could cross the river on foot, but the tanks couldn't because they bogged down in the mud. Okay. So I says, uh, well, that, that, that's no problem on that. I'll drop it, and yeah, when you drop it, get back as fast as you can. Yeah, get out of the way. You get out of the way. And that damn thing will boom, break. So you had you artillery would, arm aimed at you, or probably about to be aimed at you. You probably had, did you, have, <laughs> did you hear you pinging off your tank? No. Okay. No, no, no. So you were good to go? Yeah, I was good to go. The, the, the machine gunner was in the back of me over there. And we were, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he wasn't a Browning machine gun, he was a damn water cool machine gun. It was the oldest the machine gun. That's why we trained here in Fort Knox, was water cool. Water cools? Which you, you had to have water. If you had, if it wasn't no water, it would burn up. <laughs> Hence Mr. Kelly getting his name, yeah. Yeah. So when the <laughs> Browning machine gun guy, that's why called Kelly. Kelly got his name. I machine heard in some of those it. cases they, they ran out of water, they would pee in those things to keep them cool. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so this Bangalore, explain this to me. You're driving a tank and they, they've got it mounted mm -hmm. to the bottom of your tank. Right. And you got a release lever. Right. So you got 20, 20 feet of uh, Bangalore hanging out the back and 20 or 30 feet hanging out the front. No. That sucker, well, I had to drive the tank and guide it with my tank. Okay. And I only had about three feet going on underneath my, my tank. So you're yeah. literally pushing a pipe. Yeah, I'm pushing it. A 40 to 50 foot, or 50 yard, 40 yard to 50 yard pipe. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, I Just mean, like they blew the walls off in Omaha, they had to keep pushing the pipe up. Yeah. So that thing wouldn't blow as long as you were pushing. Well, what stopped it from going into the mud and dip and barreling down under? Because I didn't, I didn't get that 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 far. I didn't get. I wasn't that far in the to, with a bungalow torpedo. I was only far enough to set him up at the edge. Okay. Okay. At the edge over there, and I drop him over here. Okay. I took the lever and drop him. Went forward and. Then, backed up again. But it literally so, was up in front of your tank. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Sam. And this is this is this is guy this guy was fired. He had about I don't know more likely about he was it blew. It blew <laughs> it blew a big hole. Yeah, it be it blew some holes on it and, and blew aside there any 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 uh, anti personnel mine that they had Bury there for the infantry to keep you from crossing. Yeah. Well, for, to keep them from crossing, I bet you they exploded. I don't know. Well, it, yeah, they said they had a lot of problem with that people were crossing the river to get on the other side, and it was mine. Oh yeah, they're everything. And then you there. had then you had bunkers, people yeah. firing at you from the bunkers. Killers, yeah. Wow. So, All right, so back to casino. Had the Abbey already been taken when you did this? The heavy? Yeah, was it already blown up and, and American, or you and Allied forces occupied it when you did this move with the Bangalore? The Bangalore torpedo? Or was that part of you taking the casino, taking the Abbey casino? Uh, we, were, we, was, we was after casino trying to cross it to go, instead of going around it in the back, like we did when they pulled us out of there. Yeah, because that failed. Yeah, we we bent, went back and went around, we loaded up in the LSD. Okay, well that's, that's what I'm saying. You all tried to cross the, the Rapido and take the castle and the Abbey head on, that failed. Yeah, yeah, that was a failure there. All right. And you all had your tanks down here at one point, you were offering artillery fire, cover fire into the hill, right? The big hill there, where the monastery is. Abbey, okay. The, we, we had uh, 500 flying fortresses. Okay. Came and bombed it. And you saw that? Yeah, I saw that. 
And I also saw the, some of the infantry, uh, the, I talked to one guy, he says, man alive, those people there don't know where in the hell to put the bomb, they put them on us. Yeah. And I said, well, don't blame them uh, too much. I said, they try hard to do the right thing. I said. Right. But you know, the equipment we got today, on account of this damn dumb president we got, <coughs> uh, nothing is perfect. Well, so. the, the Battle of Casino was pivotal because they wanted to get through here and into the Leary Valley, which was a clean run to Rome. Right. Okay. So you're not actually there for the taking of Casino. When they finally no. took this no. fortress, no. you no. all had been pulled back all the way to Naples. We, we were going back. We were going around to land in Anzio, which that put a, a, a close the gate for them to repeat backward. They had to go forward, and that's where they went. Will finish them off. Okay. Well, let me let me draw that out. We're going to show the uh, the Italian border, if you will. Up here is Naples. Mm -hmm. Down here is Anzio. Okay, that'll be Anzio. This is Naples. We are about Casino maybe, was over here. We might, we are about maybe thirty-five miles from uh, Naples. Right, and then there's a swamp land in here. Yeah. And Walker had pushed you guys all the way up to this swamp area. Yeah. But then you travel over. You come up from Naples to here. Over to Anzio, I mean over to Casino, and back from Casino to Naples. Mm -hmm. Then you board LST in Naples and come around to Anzio. Yeah. Now they had been at Anzio for a while when you all showed up, right? You weren't the first ones on the beach. Eh? No, no. There was infantry there first. Uh, already. So you're all part of the re-fortification right. process. We we, we we are reinforcing. Right. So what you had, this German line, all this was flooded mm -hmm. by the Germans. Right. So you had this line here. The Germans didn't want to give up Casino because that was the key to getting down in here into the Leary Valley. Yeah. The Leary Valley was the pathway down here to Rome, which is where Walker wanted to be, I mean, uh, Clark wanted to be more than anything. Yeah. So when you all come into Anzio, you're there for like a couple months. Yeah, more likely, actually. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you said that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I worked with them too long. Uh, anyway, let me see now. Uh, we weren't there, but maybe, maybe between a, a, about a half a month. Two weeks? Yeah, about two weeks. Right around there, at, at, uh, between uh, uh, what was it, the town I told you about? Well, turn the map back a couple pages and you'll probably find it. Caivano. Uh, Caivano. Yeah. Caivano is just outside of, of Naples. Of Naples? Yeah. I thought it was outside of uh, Anzio. No, no. Alright, so Caivano. we have Naples up here. Yeah. Caivano is just outside of there. Right. right. Naples here. You're all bivouacked at Caivano. Yeah. About okay. four days. For four days. Yeah. And then from there you go to Naples and LST de Enzio. Yeah. Okay. We go, yeah. From there we go to uh, we go to Enzio, I mean, uh, Casino. Because Casino. We were going to try uh, to go through there with the armor and infantry and artillery. So artillery 
it, it was pretty darn good that they can pull off the road and start start firing, putting a lot of fire on it right away. So you came back to the casino a second time? <clears throat> no, no, that's the, I'm talking about the first time. Oh, well, we've already passed that party. Okay. I want to tell, I want to talk about Anzio. Okay, let's go with Anzio. Let's go with Anzio. When you're in Anzio, they have a beachhead that's approximately uh, two miles deep and four miles wide. Uh -huh. And every time they expand outwards, which they wanted to try to push the Americans further out, try to get them off that beachhead, right? You're right. You were here for two weeks, and you're part of the re-fortification of Anzio. Now your tank is like tucked up underneath uh, hillsides, and there's little bunkers they dug you're in the right. side of the hill yeah. and all that here. No, I'm in the sand. You're in the sand? You start with. All right. 54 days there in the sand. 54 days? Yeah. Well, that's a little bit longer than half a month. That's more like, oh, it, that's I, two and a half months. No, I was talking about the casino. Oh, casino was two weeks. Yeah. Okay, I'll get that. I think I, I got you on that. There's, there's an interesting story, the way that plays out in that book I just played right. you. So, 54 days in Anzio. Yeah. Right? When you all come out of Anzio, what's your first thing? Where do you go? Cisterna. Cisterna. Yeah, where they fought hard. The Rangers fought hard. I think they got them all except one for them. All right, from Cisterna to where? From Cisterna we went out in the outskirts and we stepped on the hill there out of Cisterna, and we we stay there a few, maybe the day and the night, and then the next day we moved out. Okay. And then we were going towards Rome. Rome is a word. Yeah, well we gotta go, we gotta go back in time on this to do that. Okay. Let's see, uh, that's Florence, that's when you guys come up into Florence. Yeah. We haven't got there yet, we're a long way away from doing Florence. I mean, we're driving, I'm driving fast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Keys, Naples, Anzio. Here's the, here's the barricades in Anzio yeah. coming out. And you say you hit Cisterna. C-I-S-T-E-R-N-A. Yeah. There's Cisterna right there. And you moved northward from that position? Nope. We got to drop down. Well, and look for the road. Look for north. Well, here's the road. Here's the road there going north. Yeah, here it is. And that takes you over to uh, Dalbano and Valletri? I guess so. Going or towards Rome. Towards Rome? Yeah. Yeah, then you're going to follow this. You're going to follow the ocean. Yeah. Said going north. Yeah, you're gonna follow the ocean at that point. All right. Because the Germans here, we put more troops because we, we had them bottled up. That's what happened to them. Okay. Because they didn't they didn't uh, expand it out and cover all the sites that they were there to where we, we can we can in, invade you know or land. Okay. So here's Rome here. Right, so you all travel up this way, and then here's Anzio, here's Rome. So you're only looking at about maybe, uh, I don't know, 50 miles, maybe 40 miles. No, a little farther so, than that. Well, according, I'm just well, using yeah, the, the map. You're probably right because it was, I would say it was 11 o'clock when we took Rome that day because we had it. A few, a few. Uh, uh, we had a time there for the the Catholics. We could go to church, you know, and pray. Yeah. Or sightsee a little bit there, about maybe five to ten minutes. And I saw the. I said, man, I said, good thing we didn't we didn't disappear there. Where they used to fight the animals with a human being. 
Oh, back when the Romans had it? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I said, because she was for crying out loud. We didn't do much damage. I said, they could go ahead and repair it back, and they did. So you tell me you didn't see yourself as a gladiator? No, I didn't see myself fighting a damn animal. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was ludicrous. Okay. I'm going to try to draw this map again, and I'm not very good at it, so let me, let me get oriented here. Okay. And get this boot drawn up. It's an ugly boot. Right? Yeah. You're like if you were to shoot. Right. So, Italy opens up a little bit up here. That's, that's here. And this, this, and this, this border up here is Switzerland. This hook that you got over there, it should be on the right hand side. This hook. If you're going like this here, you see the boot? I get the boot. Yeah. If you turn that up, uh -huh. I know it's a pitiful, it's a pitiful drawing. So I'm just, I'm just going to draw a boot. Okay. I'm just going to draw a real boot. There's a boot and a swing. Yeah. Okay. It. That's, that's the way. So, Naples here. Yeah. Anzio here. Mm -hmm. Rome up here. And you all, you all have come in. You've gone up. You've come back. You've gone over. You've headed north after going to Cisterna. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is Rome. Right. So you're in Rome, and you stop to pray for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Go see the Pope and say hello. Yeah. Give him your regards. <laughs> I did. I went to see that the, where they fought the, with the human fought the down animal. And you you walked there. up to the Coliseum. Coliseum. Okay. And I, after I, I saw enough of it, I went back to my tent. Did you see the Vatican? Oh, oh yeah. Did you go in? No, no, I didn't go in. You missed an opportunity of a lifetime. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> but I didn't miss it. I went back again. Oh, you did? Yeah. Well, I was yeah. going to say, because in all fairness, you're living the opportunity yeah, of a lifetime. Because uh, uh, my, my girl, said, Hilda, took a lot of pictures and she went into the basilica. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, this is after, way after the fact. Yeah. Okay, but I'm just saying you weren't there during the fact. No, no. All right. So from Rome, I've got you going into like Turin, Florence, Florence yeah. Milano, or Milan, and the Swiss border. Yeah. Now we're not going to get into that much today, but I'm just going to draw it on the map so we know. You follow this further north over to Turin. Yeah. From Turin over here to Florence. From Florence up to, what did I just say, Milano? Milano. And Milano to the little tunnel there on the Swiss border. Right. By the time we get to there, it is 1945. What month right. is that? That's June. June. Okay. Yeah, June 2045. But you land here in Naples, your original trip to Naples happens in what year? 43? You landed in 42, 43. Yeah. So you've been in Italy for two years. Right. After spending three. Three years. Yeah. 43, 44, 45. Right. And you spent at least three to six months over here in North Africa. Right. Now, a lot of people aren't aware of this, but when you sign up in the military in World War II time, mm -hmm. you're in for the whole ride. There is right. no 12 month, 18 month tours and home you go. They, they send you home with points. With points. See, see you, you've been there a year, you had a Purple Heart, that was something that counted. That was points? Yeah, points. Okay. And, and I, I, I never had enough points anyway. I burned them up when I started drinking. Oh, you mean you got in trouble and they took your points? Yes. If they hadn't taken your points, how soon could you have come home? Probably within, the, within a year and a half. Year and a half? Yeah. That cut down on the time of putting it. The price of alcohol went up, didn't it? Yeah, the price of alcohol <laughs> went up. Went up, is it? But every time that that I got into trouble, that puts me back. 
push me back and send somebody else that deserves to go home. Right. I didn't deserve to go home. You didn't think so because you got in trouble? Yeah. Is that why you think you didn't deserve? I think so. That's, that's where I, my thinking was. Let me ask you a question that I hear a lot of uh, soldiers tell me about. Okay. They suggest to me that the reason why they kept re-upping after doing a tour of duty, like if they go to Afghanistan or Iraq, they'll do another tour as long as they know their guys are gone, the guys they were serving with. If they're in, they follow them and stay with them. Yeah. Okay, now that doesn't happen so much as reserve units, but in regular Marines, regular Army, regular Navy. Right. You know, if you're on a tour and you're going to go back and do another tour, guys talk to the ones that are going to do the second tour. As long as they're going together, they'll go. Now I'm going to bring up a story that you brought up to me a long, long time ago. Okay. 